Greetings, brothers and sisters. Greetings, brothers and sisters. I pray all is well. Um, I pray that the grace of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus strengthen you according to his will and his purpose. Um, I pray that you know our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus is faithful. I pray that you know he's coming soon. Um, brothers and sisters, I have a word for you today. It's a heavy meal, um, but it's definitely needed. So without further ado, let us pray so hard to get into a place to receive all that the Lord has to pour into us, to do, pour into us today, okay? So let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we repent of our sins. Please forgive us of our sins. We come for your throne. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your sacrifice. Lord, we thank you for being here for us. We thank you for leading us by your spirit. We thank you for engraving your testimony in the, po in the, in the posture of our heart that we may truly live for your glory. Lord, we pray over every person that is listening right now, Lord, that they will hear your word, that they will receive your word, Lord, that your truth will go forward mightily, that we may all be transformed by the power of your spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Remove every distraction. Remove every hindrance. Remove anything that will cause your word not to bear fruit in our heart. Lord God, we love you. And we thank you for all that you do, and all that you bring, and all that you pour out. In Jesus' person name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, brothers and sisters, let's get into this word, okay? Let's get into this word. Uh, give me one second. Let me make sure I got uh, everything off so you guys can hear me clearly and hear me well, okay? Uh, brothers and sisters, as I've been spending time with the Lord, Lord Jesus, the Lord been speaking to me, okay? And... The most important thing in our life is our relationship with Jesus, okay? The most important thing in our life is our relationship with Jesus because that is the only thing that's going to get us in the kingdom of God. Okay? And I know there's a lot of things that are happening right now. I know there's a lot of things that are shifting right now, physically and spiritually. And brothers and sisters, if we don't know how to shift this moving, then we will miss the wave. If we don't know how to shift the moving, we'll miss the wave or end up on the wrong wave. That will cause us to be separated from God forever. But the grace of God desire for us to be with him. So therefore, in this hour, brothers and sisters, let our eyes be consistently fixed on Jesus. Let our eyes be consistently fixed on his glory because he is the only one can save us. One word government can't save us. Science can't save us. Only the word of God can save us. And as I've been spending time with the Lord of God, the Lord, uh, spending time, the Lord been speaking to me, he says, son, let my love, let my righteousness be engraved in the posture of your heart that it transform you that you never will be the same. And as we consider the power of God, the grace of God, the righteousness of God, let us, our heart be transformed by his spirit that we may live for his glory and no longer turn back to our former life or our former passions. Okay. And as I've been speaking to the Lord, he says, son, the most important commodity in this life is time. And he says, son, in this life, you can lose a lot of things and you can get a lot of things back. But one thing you cannot get back is time. Okay. You can lose money. You can get money back. You can lose the car and get the car back. You can lose the house and get the house back. But one thing you cannot get back is time. Okay. And he says, son, this is the hour of my second coming and time is short. And he said, son, speak this to my children. The title of this message is Final Hour, Final Hour, Hour, Final Hour, The Highway to Heaven. The title of this message is Final Hour, Final Hour, Hour, Highway to Heaven. Let me repeat that because I stumbled. The title of this message is Final Hour, The Highway to Heaven. Brothers and sisters, as we get up and we go to work on our daily basis, we all sometimes have to hit the highway to get to our job. Or sometimes we have to hit the highway to get to the event. Or sometimes we have to hit the highway to go over a dear loved one house. Okay? Because the highway connects us to different places that we are going. Okay? And brothers and sisters, we have to understand that we are in the final hour of the second coming of Jesus. And we have to be on the right highway to enter heaven. Brothers and sisters, we are in that final hour, the return of Christ Jesus, and we must, we must be on the right highway to enter his glory. And that highway is salvation. That highway is his righteousness. For Jesus said no one can enter the kingdom of heaven unless he were born of the Spirit of God. And the only way to be reborn of the Spirit of God is to be submitted to the one who is God, and that one is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? And as I've been spending time with the Lord, he says, son, 
This is a this is the hour that the church need to create a highway, prepare the way of the Lord. Because right now, this world and this hour and this seven-year period is a desolate wilderness, and the only thing that will keep you on the highway is the Spirit of God. Okay. Jesus said that I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So what do we compare the life of Christ to? The life of Jesus is the highway to heaven. Therefore, anyone outside of the life of Christ is not on the highway to heaven. Therefore, we all must come to repentance and receive his grace. Okay? And this is what the Lord led me to in John chapter 14. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And my father's house is many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, you, and, and, where I, and, where, and, where, and, and where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes through the Father except through me. Brothers and sisters, this is the final hour. Jesus said no one can go to the Father except through me. Okay. That is a very important statement because right there, Jesus is laying down his sovereignty. Jesus is laying down the foundation, the sovereignty, and the territory of his good work and his pleasure that the Father has sent him to do. And he said that no one can enter the kingdom of God. No one can go through the Father except through him. Why is that important? Because, brothers and sisters, we are in that final hour. COVID-19 is shaking the earth because we are in the second coming of Christ Jesus. The violence is filling the land because we are in the second coming of Christ Jesus. People are getting more wicked than they ever have been before, and they even get even more for go even more get even more worse because we are in the time of the global reset and the one world government. Why? Because this is the final hour of the second coming of Jesus. Okay? And when we get an understanding that we are in that final hour of the second coming of Jesus, our heart have to turn to him. As we are in that second hour of Christ Jesus, our heart posture has to move from a place of death and come into the place that is life by being engraved in the one who is life. And that one is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? So Jesus laid the foundation. Okay, So whenever workers or construction workers are building the highway, they have to lay out the foundation, the blueprint of the highway that they are building. Or if there's a bridge involved, this highway, they must all got to come together and look at the blueprint that is laid out so it can be finished the right way. Jesus said, apart from me, man is dead in his sin. So Jesus is laying the sovereignty, the territory, and the power of his spirit saying that you cannot go through the Father except through me. Well, brothers and sisters, there's many things we can pursue in this hour, but the greatest thing we can pursue is our relationship with God. The greatest thing we can pursue in this hour is our relationship with God because this is the final hour. Okay? This is the hour that the judgment of God is coming upon this world. Therefore, it is time for every man to repent and turn to Jesus. Okay? This is the hour of great judgment. And everything you see happening right now on the earth, you might look and be like, man, why is it so corrupt? Why are politicians so corrupt? Why are people getting more wicked? Why are people are dying as much as they do? Because this is the final hour, the second coming of Christ Jesus. And it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. And the only thing that will keep us is the grace of God. And that grace is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay. Moving forward. Jesus said, uh, verse 7, if you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, and from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said, I have been with you so long. Have you not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the work themselves. Okay. Jesus right now is revealing his identity, his deity of that he is God. Okay, Why is that important? Because in this hour, the one world government is going to resurrect false God. Even right now, behind the scenes, they're building a statue for this whole world to worship. 
Right now in this hour, the one world government is building a statue for every man to worship. And right now the whole world is, is, is turning towards the statue of science. Right now in this hour, the one world government is building and is resurrecting a statue. Okay. That statue is an abominable statue that have LGBT uh, uh, engraved in it, but also science engraved in it. And they're building this one world government statue behind the scene that, ev that they will cause every man to worship in order to be a part of their system. Why is that important? Why is these things happening? Because this is the final hour, okay? And whenever you hear that this is the final hour, this, there needs to be greater urgency. Let me give you an example. Whenever someone planning an event, they planning a wedding, or they're planning something that they're uh, for their loved one or anything they're pursuing, then the closer it gets to the time, the greater the urgency it needs to be finished. The closer you get to the time, the greater urgency that it needs to be finished. Church, because this is the final hour, there, there needs to be a greater urgency for us to obey the voice of God. Because this is the final hour, there needs to be a greater urgency of us obeying the voice of God because only those who are obedient to God that live by his love through his grace will have endurance to finish the race in this hour why because this is the final hour you're going to need the highway to heaven because this is the final hour you're going to need the highway to heaven and that highway is the life of Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior okay, okay. let's keep moving forward Verse 12 it said, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I got I got I gotta go, I go to my father. And whatever you ask in my name that I would do, and that father, and, and that the father may be glorified in the son. If you ask anything in my name, I would do it. Church, right now Jesus is giving us the mission of how our heart needs to be towards the Father. Right here in this passage, brother and sister, our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus is giving, and giving us a, a, an example of how we have access to the Father and how we respond to the Father. Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, the Father would do it. Okay? In this hour, there needs to be a cry in the church heart for obedience that, Lord, help me be obedient so I can glorify your name. And in order to glorify God's name, we must live by the one who is the name of God. And that one is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? Brothers and sisters, this is our hope. Listen to what our Lord said. He said, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that he do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do. Church, there's a great work for us to do in this seven-year period leading up to the second coming of Jesus. But the only way for it to be done is in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And not from a place of religiosity and lip service, but from a place of heart service for his glory. Because in this hour, brothers and sisters, we have to have our heart to be a bond servant for Jesus despite the persecution that we will face. Okay? So what did we say? Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So brothers and sisters, what did we say? Let by the name of God, we cry out to be more intimate with God. Let by the name of God, we will cry out to be more intimate with God. Because the name of his son is being revealed and being engraved in every partial of our being and our heart. That in all things we may walk as a little children, faithful to his name and his testimony. Okay. Okay. The next thing the Lord took me to was 1 John. Okay. Okay. 1 John. But before we go to 1 John, we're going we're gonna to hit James chapter 1. It said, my brethren, count it all joy. When you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let no man, for let, for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded and unstable in all his ways. Okay, Brothers and sisters, let not in this hour the corruption of this world make us double-minded in our faith toward God. Jesus. Let not in this hour 
the corruption around us and the lust of this world make us double-minded in our faith toward God. Okay? Because if we're not, if we're double-minded, then we can't even pursue God's heart from a place of devotion. If we're double-minded, we can't even pursue God's heart from a place of devotion because we're divided in our heart. So what do we say? Our Lord and our God don't want us to be divided, but he wants us to truly be devoted to his heart. Okay? Okay. What do we say? Jesus also said, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Well, in this seven years period, church, we will fall into various trials. But the trial will not be meant to break us, but rather shape our faith all the more. God will use every trial that we face, face in this hour to propel us for his glory, those who are submitted to his spirit. Okay? So what do we say? Church, let there only be one hope in this hour, and that is our faith in Jesus. Because, do, do the note, you see how you see how the globalists of America, they want the Green New Deal, okay? They want a two, two, two trillion dollar infrastructure bill, okay? You got, you got uh, 24 of the world leaders calling for a global pandemic treaty where they want to bring together economic power. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches. You got global organizations all around the world, even in America, some of these people are calling for a global pandemic treaty. For what? Because they want to bring together our economy, our financial system. Why? Why are their heart posture like that? Because Revelation 13 said that there will be a one world government. And right now, you got the whole world calling for, um, 24, of the leaders, 24 of the world leaders calling for a global pandemic treaty. Why? Because we're moving forward to the second coming of Jesus. Well, these people are going to create a one world system. It's going to try to make man bow down and worship. Why is this important? Because this is the final hour. Okay? And this is, if it, and getting the understanding that this is the final hour, you must indeed be on the highway to heaven. Okay? So what do we say? Let us not see our trials as a burden, but a profit to eternal life. Let us not see our trials as a burden, but a profit for eternal life. For as we begin to walk with God in his love and trust in the peace of God, then our trials will no longer be a burden, but an opportunity to obey his will and faith that in all things we may increase in his love. And as we increase in his love, we will never be the same because we're living by the one who was never from this world. And that one is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Verse 9 said, Let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation, because as the flower of the field will pass away, for no sooner has the sun risen with a burning heat than it withers the grass. It flowers fall, and its beautiful appearance perish, so the rich man also will fade away in his pursuit. Lord, brothers and sisters, let us not pursue the false riches of this life, because in this hour, yes indeed, brothers and sisters, the one world government is working on a universal income, okay? That is why they want $2 trillion infrastructure bills. That's why they want, uh, uh, that's why they pushing so many, to pushing so much money into the economy. Brothers and sisters, these people want a universal income. Why? Because the Bible tells us during the Great Tribulation, uh, the whole world would be, the whole world would be great into one economic system. Those who follow the beast, the Antichrist. Why is that important, brothers and sisters? Because, brothers and sisters, this is the final hour. Okay. So how do we escape such a deception? How do we escape the, 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 the deception, the plans that these people are planning? By not pursuing the riches of this life, but by pursuing the richness of the one who is life. Let me repeat that. The way that we escape is not pursuing, the way we escape this is not to pursue the riches of this life, but, per per but pursue the riches from the one who is life. And that one is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So the question is, how do we get access into the riches of heaven? We get access to the riches of heaven by being fully obedient to the gospel. We get access to the riches of heaven by being fully, fully obedient to the gospel. Why is this important? Because the gospel is our only hope in this hour. Brothers and sisters, you got, in this seven year period, moving forward in 2021, you finna hear many people come out with more false sense of hope. You're going to hear people come out with many solutions. You're going to hear many people talk about what they can do, how they can make it better, how all humans can come together. But brothers and sisters, it will be a great deception. 
because in this hour hope is not in man hope is in God and there is only one true God and that is Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior in this hour there's only hope in one true God that is Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior so what do we say this final hour will be full of deception but it's also this final hour will be full be full of repentance because God is about to bring judgment on America like you never like like you have never seen before there's gonna be great judgment on this world like you have never seen before and the only hope is the highway to heaven so what do we say brothers and sisters let us look to heaven where our help come from because our true God hopes that none of us will perish but all of us will turn to Christ and live for his glory because this is the hour where God's judgment is gonna be gonna hit the earth like it never have been before God is going to allow some things to happen like that you have never seen before. But it's going to separate the wheat from the tares. It's going to separate those who really follow Jesus and who do not. But also, it will be an open hand for those who have not accepted him before to come into his love and his grace. Okay. okay. Next thing the Lord took me to was 1 John. Give me one second, brothers and sisters. 1 John. Chapter 3. If I can get to it, get to it. Sorry, brothers and sisters. <laughs> Give me one second. I'm trying to get to it. Yeah. First John. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, okay. First John, chapter 3. It said, And now, little children, abide in him. Well, excuse me, I'm going to start at the end of chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 28, and going to 3. It said, and now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know the if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. Jesus. Brothers and sisters, this is the final hour, and it is very important, and it is a greater urgency to practice righteousness. In this hour, there is a greater urgency to be obedient to the gospel, and a greater urgency to practice righteousness. Okay. Why? Because in this hour, you're going to see the whole world practice evil and they're going to legalize sin, legalize evil deeds, evil wicked. They're going to call this to it, the politicians, the media is going to call the most perverse and wicked things good. Okay. And if you don't practice righteousness, you will practice these things and you won't know the difference between that which is good and bad. Not that you don't know that they are good, but guess what? Even though you know you will reject them as good because you are following the ways of this world. This is the main hour to practice righteousness because as, as you practice righteousness, it's going to build the foundation and your identity in Jesus so you won't be corrupt like the false identity of this life. Okay. In this hour, Satan have a false identity system that he's going to call the world to be given over to because they did not love the truth. And how will people be deceived? It's because they did not practice righteousness in their heart by loving the truth. And that truth is Christ Jesus. Our Lord and Savior. Okay. But also, what does it reveal to us individually? Let me repeat it. It said, and now little children. So what is Jesus saying? He says, church, this is the final hour. And this is the hour for you to be truly children of God. Okay. And he says, son, I'm going to give you the evidence that revealed to you that you are the children of God. Because he says, son, I'm a master planner. And if I show you things, if these things that are happening right now in America all around the world I said that these things would happen over 2,000 years ago that means by my word I am a master planner meaning that that I know the end from the beginning and nothing can stop the plan of the second coming of my son and as we get an understanding that our father is the master planner then as a little children we must follow his plan as we get an understanding that our father is a master planner then as his children we must follow his plan for what what obedient child does not follow the will of his parent because the obedient child follow the will of the parent because that child know that his parent is safe it's trustworthy and will finish what he say okay okay so right now our lord and savior is saying in this final hour you need to be on the highway to heaven and the only way to be on the highway to heaven is to be a child of god and he said can't no any man just say that he's a child of god because in order to be a child of God, you must encounter the truth of heaven. And that truth is Christ Jesus. 
our Lord and Savior. And he said, once you encounter the truth that come from heaven, then that same encounter give you evidence to show that you're still walking in that truth that come from heaven. And he said, here's the evidence. He said, he said, and now little children abide in him. So the greatest evidence that we are children is when we abide in God. The greatest evidence when we are children that follow Jesus is when we abide in God. Because when we abide in God, we abide in the love of God. When we abide in God, we abide in the truth of God. When we abide in God, we lay down our life to glorify his name because by his name our life came. Oh, man. So the greatest evidence that we are children is when we abide in his righteousness. Not only does his righteousness keep us from sin, but his righteousness also keep us in peace. And not only does his righteousness keep us in peace, but it keeps us from deception. And not only does it keep us from deception, but it keeps our soul from being corrupted because we are completely engraved with his love and his sacrifice. Okay. What else does it do? It gives us hope and the eternal promise that this world can't take away. What else does it do? It gives us hope and the eternal promise that this world cannot take away. So what is the evidence that we are children of God is when we completely abide in him. Okay. And what does, what is the advantage of abiding in God in this final hour that after this seven year period, because we are indeed in this seven year period leading up to the second coming of Jesus. So brothers and sisters, what is the greatest evidence? What is the confidence that we have when we abide in him? It's this one simple thing. We have confidence when he come in the clouds to receive us up because we know we've been having fellowship with him from the heart. Okay. So the greatest evidence when we are children of God is not just when we go out and preach like, a, like I'm preaching now. This is part of the evidence, but it's not just the evidence itself. Okay. The greatest evidence that we are children of God is not just when we preach or not just when we feed the homeless or not when we just do outreach. The greatest evidence, now we got to do these things, but the greatest evidence when we, if we are children of God, is when we abide in him and it build a confidence that man, when he comes, I'm going to be with him. Okay. He said, you do not need that anyone to teach you, but as the same one to teach you concerning all things and is true and not, and not a lie. The greatest evidence that you are a child of God is when you let God be true and every man a liar. The greatest evidence that you are a child of God, the greatest evidence that you are a child of God is when you let God be true and every man a liar. The greatest evidence, brothers and sisters, that you are a child of God is when you let God be true and every man a liar. Because if you don't live that way in this hour, then man will deceive you in this hour. Okay? In this hour, man, man is exalting himself through science, trying to be God. And if we don't let God be true, then our life will be a lie because we turn it from the truth that saved us. Oh, man. So the greatest evidence that, you are, that we are a child of God is when we let God be true and every, and every man a liar. Why? Because God teaches us by his spirit and God tells us everything is true. If God tells us everything that are true and free us from everything that is a lie. Oh. That's why in this hour, this final hour, this deception, it, it is important to follow the way of God because deception is going to be so rampant. And if you don't know the truth, love the truth, you will be deceived by the lies around you. Not only the lies around you, but the lies that fester in our thoughts and our heart that deceive us from the will of God. So what do we say? We must be children of God that we may know our true identity in this final hour. We must be children of God so we'll know our true identity in this final hour. Why? Because this is the final hour, the second coming of Jesus, and we must indeed be on the highway to heaven. Okay? Why? It's important. Because the Spirit of God teaches us all things through the one who is all things, and that one is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And as he is the one of all things, that means he is the one of all things that are true. Not things concerning this mortal physical life that we are in but the things of heaven the glory of God that were built off a of foundation of truth of eternal life by the one who is eternal in that life because our life flows to him, flow to, through him not only in the earth but also in the heaven that we cannot see that we will dwell at soon for brothers and sisters I have seen a new heaven and new earth coming down from God out of heaven 
I have seen Jesus face to face talking to Jesus, but I tell you one thing, brother and sister. Jesus is the same as his word. <laughs> Though I've talked to him face to face, you can look at this Bible and get a face to face account with him because he's the same as his word. Oh. So what do we say? Before Jesus came the first time, John the Baptist went walking in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make every quicker path straight. Well, like so, this is the second coming of Christ Jesus. Let us prepare the way of the Lord, church. In the wilderness, let's make a highway for his glory. Let us turn to him, repent of our sins, and come to him. So as John the Baptist came the first time Jesus came, so as the Lord has raised the remnant up in this hour to preach that same way and live that same way in true devotion to God not being busy with the things of this world but being busy by the kingdom of God that lives forever why because this is the final hour and you must be on the highway to heaven okay okay, okay. the next evidence of the children of God it said if you know that he is righteous you know that everyone that practices righteousness is born of him Jesus said no one can enter the kingdom of God unless you're reborn of the spirit. Well, the greatest evidence that you are reborn of the spirit is when you practice righteousness. The greatest evidence that you are reborn of the spirit is when you practice righteousness. So what do we say? The greatest evidence that we are a child of God is when we practice righteousness in his name. In his name, by his name, through his name, for his glory, because his glory is righteous. And that righteousness is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, it said, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed that we shall what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him for." We shall see him as he is, and everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. So what do we say in this fine hour? Let our heart be in a pure place because we're attached to the one who is pure. Let our heart be in a pure place because we're living by the one who is pure. Let our heart be in a pure place because we are consistently being transformed by the power of his purity that comes through the righteousness of his blood through his sacrifice that we have truly given over to everything that he are. Why? Because brother and sister, this is the final hour and Jesus is calling us home. So what do we say? Whoever commits sin also commit lawlessness and sin is lawlessness. Brother and sister, and this seven year period moving, 20, moving forward in 2021 hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches. Moving forward in 2021, you're about to see lawlessness increase like you have never, uh, never had before. You're about to see big tech media. You're about to see the major. You're about to see the one world government take over the global new. You're about to see them take over the whole world media. Okay, first thing. Second thing, you're about to see the whole world legalize lawlessness. You're about to, you're going to begin to see the posture of man heart legalize lawlessness where they're not going to care about people getting hurt or whatever the case may be. But they're going to use it all to push their evil agenda. You're about to see the one world globalists of America and all around the world. You're going to see after every crisis that happened, they push laws and regulations. Okay. And they're going to legalize lawlessness. You are living in the hour, church. This is a final hour where the one world government, even the administration in the White House right now, hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches. They are right now speaking, the globalists are right now speaking amongst each other saying, how about we legalize law, legalize law, law, how about we legalize lawlessness to turn the people to the one world government to be saved? In their hearts, they're conjuring up evil agendas to tell to, to say to say to legalize lawlessness also that people of the world can turn to them and worship the beast. Why is that important? Because this is the final hour. And moving forward to 2021, you're about to see the whole world begin to legalize lawlessness. And those who are asleep does not have the spirit will follow this corruption. Why is this important? Because this is the final hour, the seven year period, the second coming of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. It's time to prepare the way of the Lord and all his sheep come aboard the ship while the ramp is still on the land. Okay. Why? Because this is the final hour and Jesus is indeed the highway to heaven. Okay. Okay. Jesus said, 
whoever commits sin also commit lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins neither seen him nor know him. Therefore, church, in this hour, the whole world will have joy in living a life of sin like you never have been seen before. But church, let that not be so amongst us. Rather, let us grieve and mourn over the sin that people that do will come to the knowledge of Jesus and be saved and not receive the wrath of God in the lake of fire. Okay? What does the Lord leave us with? He said, if any man sin, there's an advocate called Christ, Christ, called Christ Jesus who is ready and willing to forgive us of our sin. And this is what the Lord leave us with. This way he leave us with. 1 John 3, chapter 17. I mean, 1 John 3, chapter... 1 John chapter 3, verse 7. This is what he said. He leave us with this. He said, he said, little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. So in this hour, this world is going to legalize lawlessness. So the Lord said, the, flesh, the fight is not against flesh and blood, but against the evil principalities of this world. So brothers and sisters, when you see them begin to legalize lawlessness, you know that it's the plan of Satan. Because Jesus has given us the blueprint of this hour. And first, he's addressing our heart posture. He said, little children, let no one deceive you. He said, why? He says, little children, let no one deceive you because I'm simply telling you the truth by my spirit. He said, the same spirit that resurrected me, resurrected, resurrected me from the grave is the same spirit that is living in you. So as the Holy Spirit who is true living in you, he revealed to you the words that I am saying. So therefore, let no one deceive you. Let no one deceive you. Why? Because as you live by my spirit, you will practice righteousness that deception may have no grain, no chains on you. So he said, little children, let no one deceive you. He will practice righteousness, righteousness. So therefore, church, let us move away from a place of uh, uh, the division and come into a place of unity and truth. Not compromising with false doctrine and for person to gain through the elements of this world based upon our former passion. But rather, brothers and sisters, but rather, brothers and sisters, let us practice righteousness in unity and truth because we're looking for the hope that is coming soon. And that hope is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? It said, Beloved, he leave us with that. He said, Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practice righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sinned is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Church, in this hour, God is raising up a mighty remnant through repentance that's going to dest destroy the works of the devil by telling them the truth about Jesus being full of obedience to the gospel because they know he is the only hope for this hour. There's no man's solution that will help, help you in this hour. God is about to crush this world, and there will be no manly hope in this hour. There will be a false hope or deception of solution of man through science, but it will be a false hope. But there is only one true hope that will get you eternal life. And that life is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? So what do you say? He's raising up a remnant in this hour to destroy the works of Satan by causing by he's raising up a remnant in this hour to destroy the works works of Satan by telling them, telling the people truly what Jesus did on the cross that destroyed the works of Satan. Okay? When Jesus sacrificed, sacrificed himself on the cross, he destroyed the works of Satan. Therefore, church, Jesus is raising up a remnant is gonna give that true testimony not a testimony uh blended with uh the matters of this life and prosperity and all this other stuff no he's raising up a remnant that's going to truly simply preach the true gospel that people may turn to god in repentance okay. okay the lord said whoever has been born of god does not sin for his seed remains in him he cannot sin because he has been born of god so what he say he said this this is another evidence that you're children of god whoever born of god does not sin, meaning not that they don't fall short and make mistakes, but what he's saying is they don't practice sin. They don't live a life, they don't live a life chasing sin. They live a life chasing righteousness. Now, do they make mistakes? They fall short, absolutely. But they get up through the grace of God, repent, and run to more obedience. So what is the greatest evidence? The greatest evidence that we are children of God is that when we fall, we repent, and we pursue righteousness like we never have before. The greatest evidence that we are children of God is not when we run towards sin, it's that when we run towards righteousness. If we have a heart that runs toward righteousness, we desire righteousness, we practice righteousness, then we are of God. So forgive yourself if you have made a mistake, if your heart is in a posture of practicing righteousness. But if we're not practicing righteousness and pursuing evil, then we're not of God. Okay? So what did he say? Little children, let no one deceive you. 
Brothers and sisters, this is the final hour. Stay away from idols. Let no one deceive you. Our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus is a few years away. We are in that seven year period leading up to the second coming. So it's time for, so what do we say? Brothers and sisters, it's time for us to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And church, we're not waiting on the end time to get here because the end is now. America, 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 repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. America, judgment is on the land. Judgment is coming more. America, you're about to be judged and humbled severely. Repent. For God's hand is stretched out still. God's hand is stretched out on this world. And he's not pulling it back to his second coming. So what is the solution? All men, it's time to repent and turn to Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who is seated in heaven, right hand of the Father. Church, let no one deceive you. If you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer to me. Say, dear Lord. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. Thank you for leaving this place. Fill me up with your spirit. Teach me to walk in your ways. I put my trust in you for salvation. I believe that you sent your one and only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my risen Savior. Thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' person I we pray. Amen. 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 If you accept the Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you did the best thing you could ever do in your life. If you accept the Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, <laughs> you did the best thing you could ever do in your life. Now go get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit. Why? Jesus is the name of God, and the Godhead is revealed in Jesus. Not multiple gods. There is one God, and that God is in the Father. That God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Not multiple God, One God. And that one God name is Jesus. The Godhead is revealed through him. That's why no one could come through the Father except through his son that is seated at his right hand. Who the Father have entrusted everything with. So what do we say, church? What do we say? What should our mindset be in this final hour? We should rather have nothing in this life and be with Jesus than to have everything in this life and miss Jesus. Because true success is not having an abundance of things in this life. But true success is being retrieved by the one who will receive you into life when he comes. Because we can have many degrees, we can have all of these things. But when he comes, we don't go with him, then we was a failure. Because we did not fulfill our true duty, which is to live and obey God from the heart and truth and the spirit. But when he comes, we go with him, then we was a smashing success. Because we fulfilled our true duty, which is to live and obey God and from the heart and truth and the spirit. Brother and sister member, Christ Jesus loves us, loves us, loves us so much. Even, even, even to the death on the cross. So, brothers and sisters, if you have followed you and made a mistake, get back up. The grace of God is calling you home. If you strayed away, if you dealt with church hurt, come back. Jesus is calling you right now. Now's the time to come back to him. Now's not the time to run. He's coming soon. Get the reward that he promised you through his sacrifice. Let no man rob you of that through their mistake. Because it was not God that hurt you. It was man that hurt you. Because God loves you. Okay? And know that God's grace was never meant for us to sin more. But God's grace is an instrument of righteousness through the revelation of his love through his son Jesus that that grace may lead us to obedience, not unrighteousness. So let us not take advantage of God's grace, but rather use, use, allow God's grace to build us up in righteousness and obedience because that grace revealed his love. Brothers and sisters, Jesus loves us, loves us so, so much, even, even to the death on the cross. See you next time, brothers and sisters. Goodbye. <laughs> love you.